So a friend of mine asked me, how do you put a CG car into a 360 environment? So let's do that. First off, we're going to start with our background. Now, you can follow this tutorial not just to learn 3D Studio Max or, any, or the softwares in, that I use here, but this is just a workflow on how you would get a CG car into a 360 environment. So I have a video here, and let's have a look at this video. So we're just going to have a car, put a car here, and animate it going there. And there's me. So let's do that. First, we're going to need an image sequence. So we're going to take this, open Premiere, and just chuck it inside like that. And then we're going to chuck it on this side. So now you see, because it's a 3D uh, 360 video, we've got two halves. So we're going to just cut that by two. So now that we have this, this is our composition or our sequence. So we go to sequence setting. And let's see, where does it say what it says? So this is a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. So we're just going to cut this number down by 2. So that's... Um, 80 plus 1080. There we go. I'm just going to say OK. Now the pixels here aren't really square because it's 16 by 9. It should be one uh, aspect ratio of 1 by 2. Depending on your footage, you would just adjust this accordingly. So the moment I cut it by half, you see that we get the middle. So now we're going to come down and push it down by half. So if we select our footage here and go to motion, we're gonna push it down by, should be okay, yeah, seems fine. So we're just gonna push it down by 1080. There you go, 1080. And then what we have here is just half of that video, which is good enough for us. Now, this video is a bit weird, so I'm going to go here and just, it, it really doesn't matter. I mean, whatever you end up with, it just should sit nicely like this. So, now all I want from this is an image sequence. So, if we go here, right-click on our video, and go to, let's say, properties, it should tell us that it's a 29.97 frames per second so that's the frame rate so we're gonna make sure we export it and, and remember that frame rate so let's do it so we're gonna click on this so it's blue around this tile here and we are going to say export media and we're gonna make sure we export it to let's say the project and we'll call it backdrop because this is just going to be the backdrop of our 3D environment. And we're going to name it Street. Yeah, I like Street. Street's good. Street's where it's at. All right, so we're going to go and just for the purposes of things speeding up, we're just going to go with JPEG. Uh, JPEG sequence, match source. We got 29.97, and we're just going to hit export. All right, so we're done. Now we can close this. I don't want to save it. All right, so if we go and look at that folder, now we got this image sequence of the backdrop, and it's 545 frames. Okay, so now that we have 3D Studio Max open, first thing we're going to do is make sure that the units in this scene are set up properly, right? Usually, I put one unit is equals one centimeter. Why is this important? Uh, well, it affects your lighting, it affects shadows, it affects all sorts of things. So, this one is just what is displayed to me as the designer or whatever. So, and then we're going to right click here, configure, or, or just click on this thing here. In Maya, it's in player settings, I'm not too sure. NTSC is okay because it's 20.9.97 anyway. Um, and everything here is 
good. So now we are going to bring our car in for a little tune-up. So I haven't really um, chosen a, a suitable car here, but I thought a New York taxi in Brisbane would be pretty nice. So we're gonna merge this car in and we don't need to convert. All right, now we have this car here. So there's a few steps I gotta do before this car is ready to be animated. First of all, it's all in these little pieces if you look. If I grab the body, ooh, the glass is staying behind, all that jazz. We don't want that. So we're gonna select the whole car, deselect the wheels, and just group the whole car together, right? Call it taxi body. All right, now we've got all the wheels separated. Now, a lot of the times you'll have this problem where where these wheels are all in one mesh. We don't want that because we would we want them to turn individually and turn in a way that we can basically use it. Really. So we're going to select this, go to our modifier um, section, modifier list, and we're just going to select the polygons we want, right? That seems to be the one. And we're going to detach them. In Blender, it's, it's called separate. In Maya, it's called detach to object, I think. Uh, I forgot. But anyway, we're just going to detach them. I'm going to do it fast, so no naming. We only got a couple of wheels in this scene anyway. We'll know what's going on. It's a good idea to name your stuff, though. I mean, I, it's a bad thing I'm doing here. But anyway, let's just detach, detach, detach. Bada beam, bada boom. And the front one, detach. So I just left the one that is there. So now if I look at it, um, I got another problem. So when I rotate it, the tire will rotate around that axis. And that is not very good. Oh, whoops, look at that. Gotta fix that. <coughs> All right, so let's uh, get this guy, detach it, right? So I detached that emblem, but we needed to add it to this group, and I'm just gonna go group, attach, and select the group I want it attached to. So now we have a body and four separate wheels. The wheels, I'll just select them all. And what I'm doing here is basically making sure the pivot for these objects are in the center of their volume so that they'll rotate in place instead of around the car. So how do we do that? We go up here to this thing. It's called hierarchy apparently. Mm. And um, I'm gonna say effect pivot only center to object. All right, and seems like everything worked. So again, here I want uh, things to be separate. So now as you can see, I rotate them and the wheels rotate in place. That's good. Now the only thing left is just grouping these. So group, group, um, wheel, front right all right and then group wheel front left or group wheel uh, back right I guess, whatever makes sense to you, you know, you just want to see it in a list and know what it is. Wheel, back, uh, left. There we go. Now we got how many objects? 
couple of objects. You can uh, close this if it annoys you, but I'm just gonna keep it running. So we've got our car here, and now we're gonna save our scene. Because when you forget to save your scene, uh, it's not cool. So, scene. You don't have to call it scene, you can just call it whatever you want. But scene's funny. Because it's just, no. Uh, let's not make a scene. Anyway, um, <laughs> uh, let's see. Now, this is a part where you need this uh, plugin. Um, well, you don't need it. You could use many other things. So let's go and have a look. So craft uh, animations. Uh, so craft uh, has this plugin where you know, it's good for animating tanks and cars and bikes and cameras and all that jazz. It's pretty good. Check these guys out. Um, there is a um, car rig plugin. Um, mad car. Yeah, it's mad car. Let's have a look at mad car. So mad car. There's also mad car. A lot of people use mad car. They love mad car. So there's a bunch of things in Blender. There are already ready car rigs that you can take and just change the, the mesh and, and just work with that. But in this case, we don't care. We're just going to use that. So how do we get there? It's very similar in Maya. You just go and load the plugin and it'll show you an interface. In Max, however, you run it from here. You go to this wrench, uh, which is utilities. and um, you go here and you get this more, you hit this more thing and then here you find Craft Director Studio Utilities, right? And a button will appear right here. We're gonna press this button and see what happens. Wow, wow, wee wow, look at that. So four wheel extended. This is uh, pretty good. So this four wheel or free extended and all that stuff. I'm not going to go into all the differences here. I'm just going to press it and see what happens. So now, there's a car right here for us, right? So if I move this anywhere, it's going to move where I move it, really. So we're going to move it to where our car is. Um, the good thing is that our wheels are both on the ground. It's nice for the wheel to go into the ground a bit. It kind of looks like the car is like, uh, you know, heavy. That a part of the wheel is, you know, being compressed. But, eh, little details. So we're just going to make it as roughly as big as this car. Push it back to make sure that the back wheels align. Like so. I'm just going to... Go a bit further up. Yeah, and I'm happy with that. I'm happy with that. So, what this is, if I um, take away the car, is that this is kind of a rig, if you have a look. It's just a selection tool for us. This is not actually going to show up in the render or anything. This is just to guide me. Um, to see the car, uh, the rig, this is the bones basically, let's say, right? So, now we're just gonna get these triangle bits and align them to the, to the wheels here, one by one. So take this and then align tool and align it to your taxi or your Audi or whatever you got. You see, it doesn't matter if it's going into the mesh in front. It's just a visual feedback. So we are going to go here. Now we got all our wheels aligned. Very nice, very nice. This is a way to animate it by animating this guy and the car will follow it. Uh, we're just gonna leave it there. Um, so how do we now 
attach this car to the rig, let's say. So uh, we're going to take this car now. We've got everything positioned. I'm just going to save it once to make sure that, uh, you know, we have backup. So now we're going to take this link tool um, and link the car to uh, this bone. So the bone becomes the parent which drives the child, which is the car body. So when we animate the bone, the car will follow. So in Maya, I think it's um, constraint, parent constraint. In, uh, in Blender, you might have to just go and put the car body underneath the, the, the rig here. But in Max, it's just a link as you see here it's going to link all these all right and link this wheel boom all right now we got this car now the cool thing is i can hide the 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 rig or i can hide the body of the car because i've already rigged it i've connected whatever needs to be connected it knows which is which. So I'm just gonna hide this here and this key here that whatever we're gonna do, it's gonna animate this. Now let's do something fun. Let's go to the perspective view and we see we got a car here, right? And the cool thing about this is if I select this and press this controller button, I can load in uh, different controller schemes for this. So I'm just going to say keyboard because just double click the keyboard, close it, right. Now make sure you have some frames. I'm just holding control, alt, and right click and dragging this, right? So how many frames do we have here? Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. No, not that one. Okay, there we go. The project. So our backdrop is 545, right? So we'll set our the frames to length 545, and we press OK. So now we got 545 frames here. So just to test this uh, rig, we're just gonna save it one more time. I'm gonna press record here. Now, watch what happens. It's gonna say two, one, and then I can press up on the keyboard, and I'm gonna be moving around. Wow, well, look at that, Wee! Oh no, a tire got left behind. What could, why could that be? It's probably because I didn't parent it properly. So the cool thing is, now we've got this car animated. We can go and follow. Uh, there's a camera behind it. Now we can see it in action. And room, room, room. We are moving in 3D space, but you know, there's not, no markers for us to tell what's going on. All right, so that's how you basically animate a car, real easy. All right, so I'm gonna go back here Go to frame zero. And because I didn't um, group these two together, now I've got two objects. Because I forgot, right? So we're just going to take the tire and link it to the rig tire. So now, when I press the animation, and the, the just make sure you do that at frame zero. So now we've got the... Um, the car moving about and moving very nicely. So now that we know how to animate a car, now we've got to put it somewhere, right? Okay, so in uh, 3D Studio Max, we can go to view, no rendering, environment, and we can put the environment here and it would be in the backdrop and whatever. 
but we just need it as a reference, right? So I'm gonna go Alt B, oops, sorry, Alt B, and it's gonna give me my viewport configuration. I'm gonna go to background, and I'm gonna be using a file. Ooh, animate background, definitely. How many frames is it? 549, I guess. So one step at a time, start at zero. Do we start at zero? Let's make sure. Ooh, okay. We start at zero, yes. 545, yes, there we go. It's 545, start at zero. Um, everything is cool. Let's file desktop and go to our project. Backdrop, this guy. Make sure there's a sequence right here. Okay, and then it's gonna say, oh, are you sure? Oh, wow, it's cool, man. Yeah, all right. So we're gonna see this. Now, that's not cool. What is this, all right? So, we are going to make sure this is an environment. Use environment background. This is the IFL. Actually, let's scratch that. Let's go to use environment. We're gonna press eight, and we're gonna to go to basically your rendering environment, and click the environment. Let's create a bitmap and go to desktop. The project uh, backdrop, and we're gonna select this sequence. Okay, and it's gonna say, yes, it's 545 frames. Very good. So now, because this is in, in the environment section, it's going to use our environment. So now, if I go to follow cam, now the car will drive in the environment. Now this might, might be very confusing for you guys, so let's just go to perspective here and uh, look around. So, okay, if I look up and down, we just see the environment. So, what do we gotta do? Now we gotta create a camera. So, in this case, I'm using V-Ray. You're welcome to use any render engine you like, but it, it really doesn't matter. It's just that make sure you're creating the right cameras, putting the right settings into the camera, and you're good to go. So. I'm gonna create a camera. Let me make sure V-Ray is my render engine. V-Ray next. There we go. So we got V-Ray next, and let's make sure our resolution matches the resolution of the background, but it really doesn't have to be. So I'm just gonna create a two by one. So I'm gonna go to a very low res 11920 by uh, what's the two nine yeah nine sixty. There we go. That'll do. And that's that. So what we're gonna do is create a camera. So we have V-Ray camera, so we have V-Ray physical camera, whatever a render engine you're using, use the camera according to that. So I'm going to come here and make sure this is in the center here, just go to frame zero. And we're going to work with frame zero for now. So we're going to move this back here. I'm going to make sure that this is uh, not targeted. So, first move the target to where I want, and then make sure it's not targeted. Not targeted, yes. So, the very important things about setting up 360 cameras is that we have to make sure that in, in this video, 
when I was recording, I put the tripod here and it was basically up to my, here I guess, up to my shoulders maybe. I'm 174, so 160, 165 should do it, right? So let's see how far from the floor is the camera. So the camera right now is sitting on the floor. So I'm just gonna make sure that the Z value is 165 cm. There we go. Now, it'll come a bit above the taxi, that's okay. We're just gonna zero out all of these to make sure it's in the center. All right, I'm gonna move the camera here to be next to the car and rotate the camera. So rotating the camera, make sure, make sure there's no Y rotation, none at all, right? And make sure that you just put the camera to one direction. So let's say minus 90 and just leave it there because it's a 360 camera. It's gonna capture everything. You don't need to move it. And the camera that we shot the video with was stationary. So we're gonna say it is a still cam or a movie cam, or whatever you like. The settings are different. Um, and we are going to go here. Distortion. B -b 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 clipping. We don't need clipping. Hmm, there was a and the camera and here we want to do the override FOV and make sure it's a spherical camera so this will make it into a 360 now other softwares kind of have different settings here like for example you know in in, in Arnold you would have like inside the camera it says it's a 360 camera or whatever but they all have this built-in feature and it works kind of the same way when you press render you'll see right there you know, it's pretty dark, but here you go. I'm gonna do some stuff to fix it now. So we're gonna take the environment map, put it in the material editor here, and then we can change its setting. So I usually go to the output and set it to the output instead of one the power, I, I turn it up to 2.2. And usually that works. But here now we gotta change the camera settings. To get better lighting. So here I'm just changing the resolution uh, to just have a image aspect of two, which is two by one. So when I test render, it's, it's not gonna take as long and it's not gonna take up the whole screen. So going to the camera setting, I'm gonna change the f-stop, you know, the focal length to two, the focal aperture that is, shutter speed to 400, film speed to 400 depending on the the render engine you use these settings are going to be different whatever you can do to get the nice exposure that's all we need you can see the trees are actually reflecting in the uh, the car window that's pretty cool so here i'm adjusting the angle i had the camera pointed at in hindsight this was wrong because at the end, I, I should have like eyeballed it more because basically um, what happens is that you, you can turn the camera's uh, FOV to look a bit wider and then you can see a lot more in your scene here on the, on the, on the camera view. So then you can position the car in different places and basically get a good feel of where things are. So right now I'm, I'm basically making that empty space in the middle of the junction just to give me a marker of where things are. So I'm just modeling it out like this. 
So I'm going to fast forward here until I can get the road just right. So I just keep rendering and moving the vertices just so I can get a, a better angle on on the road there. Um, then I also make a material for the road, just a black material. It doesn't have to be anything special. Later on, we're going to edit that. So here at Forty one. Um, so here we see that, you know, we've got the road kind of figured out. We know where it's going. We got a, a bit of a clue of where things are. I've got a you know, I've got an understanding of what's happening in the scene. I have that road just for me to to see how to animate the car. I'm just aligning the car where I think it should be and just pressing record to animate basically the vehicle again. But here you'll run into a problem where the, the, the seek bar down the bottom moves really slow and you're like, oh my God, what is going on? So basically what's happening is that the animation is playing in the background while it's playing. So it's loading a lot of images in the background and it slows down the whole process. So I just go here and, and, and basically switch it off. But it's not just there. Even if I do this, it's still being loaded. So let's see here. So when it's played, it's still slowing down the process. So I'm just taking it off for now. Um, the good thing about V-Ray is that you, just many places you can place this map, basically this environment mapping. So I'm going to stop it here. Basically, well, I just let go and then press back until it stopped. And just letting go and then doing a turn. So yeah, I messed up that turn. The, the cool thing is you can stop it and go back to where you want to start recording again from and just pick that nice position and kind of like record again. So the moment you press record and it's just start recording from there, then you can adjust and, and make the adjustments happen. So here I'm just looking at my animation again. In hindsight, I should have looked at it through the camera with a bit wider lens so that, you know, I could see more of what's happening around me and and see it on the background. So we're saving again because you always have to make sure you save all the time because if you don't it'll be gone so here we're unplugging the car from this plugin now so the moment we unplug it it no longer needs the plugin and it's not there anymore so you can't really edit the animation but since we have two real segments to this animation if we select it we see all the keyframes down at the bottom there and when we move the keyframes and we see that it stopped there for a while we can actually, you know, select the, the, the keyframes there and just move them around until we're, we're happy with how long things have stopped. So it could be so many frames and then the car starts going again. So that's cool that you can actually kind of adjust the animation after the fact as well.
So we're just going to look at how many frames we actually have in our animation. So then we'll see, wow, well, there's too many frames right now. So I'm just going to undo it and bring it back to normal because it was okay where it was. And now you see all the rig kind of like shows up in the render. So the way we kind of, you know, uh, deal with this in any 3D software, we just have to specify that these objects are not to be rendered. And the way I, I select it is select whatever I want, which are the, the car body and the four wheels. And mistakenly, this one is two parts. And just control I inverse the selection and everything else gets selected. So I'm just going to deselect the camera and the ground there. And everything else that is a part of the selection now is things we don't need. So we're just going to go to object properties here and turn on renderable. Let me turn off renderable so that they're not renderable anymore. I mean, these are all simple stuff, but is it, as it takes a long while, it seems complicated, but they're very simple. Like any 3D software, you just turn off its renderability. You know, there's some people, some of them have it on a layer. You just click off. So now you see, I want the car to cast shadow on this uh, model of the, the road that we've created. So jumping forward. So now we have this and we want this black thing to just be there where the shadows are. So we're gonna, now this can be a, 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 a matte shadow material, matte as in M-A-T-T-E, but in different render engines, this is done differently. Just search for a tutorial on the render engine you're using to get the, um, the thing you need. So here it's done like this. So let's get a V-Ray material, material wrapper. So this is how we do it. Discard old material. So this is a wrapper. Uh, we're gonna map the surface, the shadow, and the effect the alpha. And we're gonna say minus one. Here are the, the alpha contribution. We're gonna put this in there. And we are going to give this to the road. Now we're gonna render. And now only where our car is, we will see some shadows. So that's basically good enough for us, but in our case, we would actually um, make sure that this part here has more room as well so that everywhere the shadow gets applied nicely. So then again, so now probably the first place we put our car had problem. That's why we're having this issue. We just have to reanimate our car, basically. So when we're animating, we definitely have to keep rendering and making sure that the car is always in the right place. Now, this light pole is not in a very good place. So if I look at it, the car is going to go through it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go to perspective view or just rotate this camera all the way there. So we know that it's in 30 degrees right now, but let's have it here. And we're going to cre create a cylinder like so. We're going to make sure it's a bit thinner, get it here a bit more, we can make it a bit fatter, 
like so. And we're basically going to give it the same material wrap. So what's going to happen here if we're back in selecting my camera here? Here we're flipped around. Not sure why. Minus ten will do it, I think. Yeah, it's more like it. So let's just give this a quick render. So now we want to get this rendered. To put it to compose it together. Now I'm gonna give it a very quick render here. So it's gonna be 540 times 10 seconds. Or here we've got so we'll give it 15 seconds. And let's give it 1920. By whatever and we want to select the range 545 we're not going to render all of it I'm just going to go through some of it now and make sure we select our output folder here desktop the project new called render and we're going to say TGA, Targo file, bullet car. Set up and make sure we get the alpha split. Okay. And let's start the render. Hmm, it's going to take a long time. So I need to stop this and make sure we don't render. Copy, V ray, environment. I'm just going to paste it here. So now. We render and we just see the car. But why are we all right? Render again. Yes. So we'll let this render and we'll come back. So we're gonna purge all our memory in this cache, free up some space, and we're gonna go and import some of our our renders. And they're on desktop. All right, over here. Let's bring in our render. So it's a footage import. And it says there are some frames missing because I cheated and didn't render all the frames. 
So we're going to go and bring in our backdrop. So we're just going to take our street and put it down here. And make sure composition settings. And make sure this is 1920. scale all right now that the street is in we got our render like this, and we're gonna bring in our car render as well. Put it right on top. Make sure it's big. Whoa. So that's the alpha. And we want the car as well. So we're gonna go down to render and go until there's no A, import that as well, and straight on matter, actually, yeah. There we go, scale, we're gonna put 200%. Gonna put this on top. Apply a Luma mat. Hmm. So we've got some frames missing here. What we are gonna do is just pre-compose them and just turn it off where the car stops, like here. It's very noisy because I rendered it really fast. And then later on when we start render playing it back, like here, for it to go forward. Now, We want that to be um, the last frame. One seventy eight. So let's go take one seventy eight. Not a sequence. them Because the car was still, I just rendered one frame here. I'm just going to So basically we come all the way here, then I just repeat this frame for this long so that the car is staying still. And when it reaches here, 
it'll just continue going. So now, the sad thing is, our rendered frame is a bit different. So here, we're just going to go to PR, and we are going to say VR rotate. There we go. Put it on there. And we can just now uh, the Z axis. So, nope, not that one. So we can take this. So make sure it gets clipped by this. And then we're going to just Maybe here. <coughs> so now that's given us some sort of uh, video representation. So I'm just going to render this out. This is a very fast animation. That's why it's, it really doesn't look right. But with the animator software, you would basically animate, double check where you're coming from, where you're going, put some land markers to just basically know uh, where you're at. So I'm going to make sure. Oh, my God. What is wrong with this? Make sure I render H two six four. There we go. Go down here. Make sure this video is VR three sixty. Borderscopic. Okay. Excellent. And we're gonna put it on desktop, the project, and save it here. I don't know, just street with addition. So now we have actually, oops, not 3D, disable 3D. So now if you look at the video, it's done. It's very low res, it's very noisy, and you know, not much care has been put into where the car starts or whatever. But you can really see like the the reflections are on it. You know, it, it's really grounded on the floor. Um, if you do this well and give it more resolution and more time to render, it'll look great. But you see, this car is now going into the building and kadoosh, right into the building. So that's that.